Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be doing a lecture. It's going to be a very quick lecture. We're going to be going over um, lung cancer, but we're going to be going over the most important things that you need to know about lung cancer, um, what you're most likely to get, get uh, what you're most likely to get test questions on, not only if you're currently in a nursing program, but on NCLEX as well. There are certain things you absolutely need to know, so I'm going to be covering that with you. Now, before we get started, as always, I'm going to ask you to please support me and support this channel by liking this video. You're going to love it. So go ahead and give me a thumbs up now so you don't forget. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And be sure to check out my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. I have so many wonderful resources there, guys. You can sign up for a Next Generation NCLEX review session, part one and part two. Part one, I teach you how to think critically. I teach you about prioritization and delegation and different situations that NCLEX may present before you and where your mind's supposed to go. Uh, part two, we go over NCLEX type questions, rationales. You can sign up for audio lessons. If you're currently in the program and you're really struggling, you have to do really well on your next exam or your next couple exam, check out my audio lessons. Very, very, very soon coming down the pipeline will be my Nexus Nursing Test Bank where you can practice questions, LPN, LVN, RN, and nurse practitioner students if you're studying for your certification exams. The most important things you need to know for your exam, their questions for you to practice, make sure you got that content down. So guys, be sure to check out my website. Again, lots of resources, nexusnursinginstitute.com. Almost daily, you can find me covering a variety of nursing topics across my social media platforms, such as TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and of course, right here on YouTube. My handle is the same everywhere, Nexus Nursing. So without any further ado, guys, let's get started. Take a look on the bottom of the screen, lung cancer. This is one of the things you need to know. Look what it says. Lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths in the United States. Not one of the, not uh, one of the, it is the leading um, cause of death-related, death-related, cancer-related um, deaths. So with that being said, before I even get to the next page, you already know when it comes to cancer, you're going to get questions that have to do with what? Prevention. Stop smoking. Don't start smoking if you haven't, okay? Just with knowing that, you already know smoking is going to be a... And you know, I say smoking, but um, on the exams, they'll say tobacco because, you know, you don't only smoke, you know, uh, cigarettes, you chew tobacco. So any form of tobacco, you're going to encourage a patient not to start. And if they started, to stop, okay? I'm going to move to the next page. Okay, guys, sorry about that. I'm back. Um, so let's take a look at etiology. Smoking is responsible. Look how high that number is. 80 to 90% of all lung cancers. And that's why it is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths. Let's go down the next paragraph. You need to know this. The risk of developing lung cancer is directly related to total exposure of tobacco smoke. And that's how you're going to see it worded on your exams. They're not going to say, you know, just smoking. They're going to use that word tobacco, okay? Tobacco smoke measured by the total number of cigarettes smoked in a lifetime, the age of smoking onset, depth of inhalation, tar and nicotine content, and the use of unfiltered cigarettes. Both smokers and non-smokers can develop lung cancer. Why is this important to know? Because you don't have to be a smoker, but guess what? If you're in close proximity to a smoker and you're getting that secondhand smoke, you also are at risk. Now I'm going to scroll down to the bottom because this is something else you need to know. My book's dirty. Don't worry about that, guys. Let's just pay attention to the content. I'll make it bigger for you. All right. Um, and I say this all the time, if you're currently in a nursing program and you're not doing so hot, let me tell you something to do just to, you know, get better. Pay special attention to these boxes, these tables, these diagrams, these charts, these illustrations, these figures. That's where a lot of your test questions are coming from. I want you to think about it. If you're reading something in the text and that same thing you saw in the text is being repeated in an alternate format, such as a box, a table, diagram, why do you think that information is being repeated? Because it's important, duh, right? So pay it special attention. Take a look at this box, uh, gender differences. You absolutely need to know what I have underlined. What does it say? More men than women die from lung cancer. That's important. Don't say that I didn't warn you. Moving on. Let's look at the next box above.
African Americans have the highest incidence of lung cancer and are more likely to die from lung cancer than any other ethnic group. Famous test question, you need to know this. Clinical manifestations. Look towards the bottom where it says clinical manifestations. All right. Lung cancer uh, frequently manifest, manifests as a low bar pneumonia that does not respond to treatment. That is important. Usually this test question, it will be presented in the form of a case study. So you have a patient and usually they'll make it an older patient. When I say older, like I mean in, in their 50s or older between 50 and 70, and it'll usually be a male. Anyway, they'll come in reporting a cough that just doesn't go away or some type of upper respiratory infection that does not go away with treatment. What does that mean? That means it's persistent. That's the word we're looking. It starts with a P, persistent. Per something that's persistent in medical terms, that is something that has been treated, that evidence-based practice has shown us should you know, treat the issue, but it hasn't worked. It's persistent. So you have a patient that's come in with an upper respiratory infection or a cough, something like that, that's been treated and it's not going away. It's persistent. It's, you know, you better start suspecting possible cancer. Okay. And what did I write here? I wrote cough, don't go away. Oh, or coughing blood, hemoptysis. When uh, in the case study, they're giving you these um, uh, clinical manifestations, that's going to be one of them. Usually that's one of them. Okay, a cough that doesn't go away, they've had it for weeks, it's not getting better, and hemoptysis, they're coughing up blood or a blood-tinged sputum. That's the wording that you may see, okay? So anyway, lung cancer frequently manifests as a low bar pneumonia that does not respond to treatment. Now look at um, the other side. Let me scroll up for you. A, look at that P word, persistent cough. You see that, you better be thinking cancer, blood tinge sputum. Later manifestations include nonspecific systemic symptoms such as anorexia, fatigue, weight loss, nausea, vomiting. Now, let me stop right there because I want to point something out to you because um, <laughs> that sentence right there, that line actually is another famous test question. So let's talk about this. These nonspecific symptoms, anorexia, fatigue, um, weight loss, nausea, and vomiting. There's another case study that you will you may see this. And this is actually what they're talking about is tuberculosis, except with these symptoms, what is also there to make you know they're talking about tuberculosis is the night sweats. All right, let me get back to what we're talking about. Let's come back to um, lung cancer, but just know that for TB. That's another question. But now back to lung cancer. Anyway, these are nonspecific symptoms that the patient um, may report, but these symptoms up here, these are the ones that should immediately make you think lung cancer, the persistent cough, the blood tinge sputum, okay? Now let's talk about diagnostic tests. You know, usually they'll do, you know, chest X-ray, CT scan, but look what I have highlighted underlined, and I put a star next to it. Why did I do all three of those? Because that has been seen on NCLEX over and over and over again. Make sure you know it. Biopsy. Biopsy is required for a definitive diagnosis for us to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's not anything else that we're de dealing with. Lung biopsy. Okay. This box, you need to know the staging. And I've underlined, um, when it comes to the staging, I've underlined, let me try and make it lighter for you, um, the ones that are usually test questions, but I don't write these exam guys. It could be anything. I'm just trying to point out the ones that you're most likely to see. So take a look at this box. You need to know the stages and the characteristics. So with stage one, the tumor is small, it's localized, it has a spread, it's still in the lung, there's no lymph node involvement. Once you get to two, it's increased in size and there is some lymph node involvement. You get to three, it's increased. The spread of it has increased. Look at it. Tumor spread to nearby structures, the chest wall, the pleura. So it's not only localized to the lung. And then last for distant metastasis. So make sure that you guys know these stages and the correct uh, characteristics. 
screening for lung cancer. Notice I said screening and not definitive diagnostic test because definitive diagnostic test is what? The lung biopsy. But before they get to lung biopsy, what do they do? Screening. So let's talk about this. Screening for um, high-risk patients is recommended by the U.S. Preventative uh, Service Task Force. Recommendations include annual screening for lung cancer in adults 55 to 80 with a history of smoking, a 30-pack year smoking history, or currently smoke. And this is why I told you about the case study that you may see on NCLEX, the age of that patient. This is exactly why. Um, let's say, let's keep going. Or quit smoking, but less than 15 years ago. We, we see this a lot. We have patients who will be diagnosed with lung cancer and they haven't smoked in 10 years. But guess what? Even if you were a smoker, you were a smoker and you're within that 15 year a period that you smoke, you're still high risk. OK, interprofessional care. Lots of things they can do. They can do, you know, surgical. Uh, they can do surgery. They can do radiation, a chemo a combination of them. I'm not going to go into detail with those because honestly, um, NCLEX really doesn't go into detail about um, the different types of treatments. Now, they may ask about treatment options and maybe a select all. So you have to know what's available, but they really don't go into detail about um, the treatment options. Surgery, what they will go into detail about that they may ask about is post-op care. So that's important. You need to know post-op care. And not only for... Um, patient with lung cancer across the board for the disease processes. If a patient has surgery, you need to know post-op care for that patient. Anyhow, um, more therapy, immunotherapy, um, prophylactic cranial radiation. They can do bronchoscopic, bronchoscopic laser therapy, um, photodynamic therapy. Just note the types of um, uh, treatments that are available. Nursing diagnoses. Ineffective airway clearance, ineffective breathing pattern, impaired gas exchange, and of course, grieving. It all makes sense, guys. The patient's got lung cancer. Nursing implementation. Look, I underlined this. I put a star next to it. That means you need to know it. That means that there's a very high chance that you're going to see this on a nursing exam, especially if you're currently in the program and this is what you're studying. Take a look. It says the best way to halt the epidemic of lung cancer is to prevent people from smoking. Prevention is always better than treatment, always across the board, okay? Prevent people from smoking, help smokers stop smoking, and decrease exposure to environmental pollutants. Is that it? That's it, guys. That is the most important thing that you guys uh, need to know when it comes to lung cancer. So if you have a test coming up, everything that I talked about, just make sure you know it, make sure you practice questions on it and you should be good to go. Please let me know in the comments section what you guys thought about this video and let me know which subject you'd like to, you'd like to see me cover next. Um, I feel like there's something I'm missing. Oh, just a reminder, guys. Very shortly, my Nexus Nursing Test Bank is coming out. I've been working very, very hard on it, um, on the concepts that you need to know to prepare for NCLEX. So if you are studying for your LPN, LVN, RN, or your nurse practitioner certification exam, keep checking my website. Um, the test bank should be out by the end of this month. I'm hoping that I can roll it out. So keep checking my website for that. It should be coming out shortly. Again, the website is nexusnursinginstitute.com. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video and you'll catch me on the next video.